Hey there. We are going to discuss transactions in FileMaker, one of my favorite topics. I've been doing this for a little while, since around FileMaker 1, and beginning with FileMaker 3, I started building a company devoted to FileMaker development and especially to building business management software and accounting solutions in FileMaker. I promise I'm going to be super quick with the slides and we're going to jump right into demos here, but I'm going to spend all of 30 seconds talking about how it used to be. In FileMaker 3 through 6, it was uh, a, a record edit by script, so much as a single set field step would download an entire record, all its field values, edit the field and re-upload the entire record to the server and subsequent set field step or other step that edits a record would do the same again, download, edit, upload. Slow um, and ultimately unreliable if there was a problem, there's a, a record locking conflict or a lost server connection, um, network connection, it was very hard to manage the, the data integrity. Fundamentally, the application model has not changed. The transaction model has not changed since FileMaker 7. We certainly have gotten some new script steps and some new, uh, new functions since then, and it certainly helped. But just to say, the understanding how, how FileMaker works uh, in this area is, is, has, not, has not changed significantly. We... Uh, We've come a long way though, and we're gonna discuss how it works now and talk a little bit about where it's going. For managing transactions, we have fundamentally a few script steps dedicated to the process, open record, commit records, and revert record. Um, it's a bit of a misnomer because uh, revert record will commit multiple records, or sorry, revert multiple records, any uh, open records, uh, including related records uh, when, when a uh, current record is reverted. And we may have some new script steps coming. We'll take a look. There are several get functions that are particularly useful for managing transactions in, in the current version of FileMaker and will be very useful in the future as well and a uh, layout trigger uh, on record commit, especially useful for managing whether or not to commit a record based on uh, the rules you, you define as a developer. There's some techniques, uh, some of which have been popularized around scripted editing and portals, uh, opening records in a loop so that you can trust they're all available to you and uh, not used as widely, but being uh, but setting fields using a global primary key or multi key, so that you can uh, you don't even need portals. You can manage that through through a scripted process entirely. We'll demo some of this and uh, and not talk about it a whole lot with slides. Let's let's jump right in. Okay, let's do a little crash course in transactions in FileMaker. We will edit a record, edit another record. We're in a portal. We can commit the record or we could revert record. I'm gonna actually show some more fields that I put on the layout. We have a record open state calc for the children and one for the parent and a get record open count for the, uh, from the point of view of the parent. We're also going to add a record through the portal. It's an allow creation relationship and record open state is one representing an uncommitted new record, record that's never been committed. Whereas two represents a record that had previously been committed and is now being edited, zero being a committed record. We can even delete a record, which uh, little known fact is record open state three 
don't know how you can ever see that in practice since it's not visible. Um, and it now thinks there are five records in an edited state, which includes the deleted record. And we could commit them by clicking in the background, by changing records, changing the parent record, uh, changing layouts, zooming the window, closing the file, many steps implicitly commit a record. Uh, and then explicitly, we could do it with a commit record script step. But we're not going to do any of those. We're going to revert record. And all of the changes are gone because they had never been committed. They were never written to the server. They were cached on the client only. What happened in practice is that as each record was edited, it was downloaded from the server to the client. And the new record only existed on the client. The deleted record hadn't been, the, the server hadn't been told that the record had been deleted, but it had been locked. And the parent record was locked as soon as the first child was on this layout was edited. That meant that any other user was, it got a, it got a, an in-use flag. It was, uh, it was flagged as in being edited from the point of view of other, other clients would see it that way. But it uh, it was only when it was committed that it was re it was written to the server. Get functions are only visible from the point of view of the client. The current window sees the open state of the records, and that's just a general principle of get functions. They're from the point of view of the current client. They don't know anything about other users. Okay, so now let's create another window. And in this window, I'm going to edit one of these records. I'm going to come back to the first window, try to edit the parent record. And I get a message that the record can't be edited because it's locked by a user, another user. In this case, it's me. I'm editing, I'm editing the record in another window of my same session. When you're developing, it's essentially interchangeable to, to test against yourself editing in multiple windows, though to be sure you can have another copy of FileMaker and edit in a, uh, you know, have two copies of FileMaker up at the same time or two computers or two virtual sessions where you're, you're testing record locking. This is a manual edit, but of course the same thing can happen by script. So imagine that another user was editing this record over here and you were trying to edit this record or any of its, uh, or the children, or maybe the whole transaction by uh, a scripted process, it's gonna fail. And you need to error trap for that. So one way to do it preemptively, I've got another little script here, uh, a set of buttons. I have uh, a script I've created, open records, and I'm going to open the parent and all the portal rows, unless it fails because the parent record is locked, transaction couldn't be completed. I'm gonna come over to this window, revert the record. Now I can open records and now all the records are open. The children are open, parents open. And now I'm guaranteed if, any, if I make any edits to the records in this portal, they will all be successful. If I come back over to this child or this other window, which could be another user, I try to edit, it won't let me. Similarly, a script, I could trap for a record lock with error 301, and I could be assured that I can't uh, have a record conflict while a, so a transaction will be completed successfully. You're used to the message that another user is editing this record. And when you don't have error capture on, it's just a manual edit. It tells you who it is. You can actually capture that in a script. I have a script that will run that captures that. It, I'm just choosing to show this message, but you could do something else with it. The function is get last external error detail. It, it actually used to only work with uh, external functions like uh, SQL, but now, if you have a record lock, it, I don't know which version of FileMaker that was introduced in, but it will return the user and the account name for the purpose of uh, providing feedback to, uh, to the user. 
so or another user. Um, let me revert here. Not that I had anything to revert. I can revert here, or I can make edits and change the values. So you can see the the logical extension of this is that you can have many portals on the same layout, updating many records in many related tables, either using one primary key, like a transaction ID that you passed into all the other records, or you can create a global multi-key with the foreign keys of all of the, uh, with foreign keys essentially to all of the related records. Uh, it could be a, um, it could be a data field that's your primary key. It could be a global that's your primary key. You don't even need portals. If you use a global and you set the global to one value after another as you edit related records, they each one will get opened in turn and uh, and edited, and then a single commit will commit all of the records. Let me show you that in practice here. Show you what's going on in the script. I'm going to just open a record, come back over here, turn on debugger. And I'm going to run my open record script. It is trying to open the parent. It's hitting a failure. And I've generated a message and exiting the script. I'm not proceeding. I could do something else with it if need be. Um, now, if I come back over to this window, well, now you're seeing my script trigger on record commit, uh, which is part of the control process. We'll talk about that maybe in a minute. Let me switch layouts. I'm going to the child layout. It's the same records as we're looking at in the portal, but now I'm editing just one child record. Come back over here, turn the debugger on again. Open records. And now I'm into the portal and I'm looping through the portal, opening each record in turn, but until when it hits a record that was locked, it's telling me I can't proceed. And at the moment, I've locked that record, but I'm exiting. If I come over here, nothing's been open because I did, it's not, um, the record's locked in the child table. So imagine all the scenarios where you could have multi-user record locks. So I'm gonna show you a, 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 an example of, of taking this to the extreme, multiple portals, multiple related tables, multi-keys related to related records in multiple tables. They don't even have to be in the same file. You can have multiple records in multiple uh, tables and multiple files, all edited through a single parent transaction record and then a single commit or revert if there's a failure. And you can manage the process by script. Regarding the layout trigger, we go to layout mode. We have a trigger on, the script name is trigger on commit. It's defined with a really simple script to not, if um, the variable allow commit is uh, true, then it, um, it can commit, but if it is zero or empty, it will not allow the script to proceed. And I'm toggling that variable in the example here, just simply with a, again, on record commit layout level script trigger. I've created a little script here to just toggle that. You wouldn't usually do it that way. You would do it as part of a bigger script where you're opening a record for editing and then it can only be committed if the flag is set to allow commit. If I have it set to not allow commit and I go to edit a record and doesn't matter what I do now, I click in the background. It's still record, it's still status two. I can revert the record. To be clear, it's not even so much as changing the value. If I copy it and paste itself to it, self, I've edited it. If I set a blank field to blank, quote, quote, it opens the record and locks the parent as well. 
I say, yeah, it just didn't refresh. Um, so I have this little button here. Um, so all these edits can't be committed by clicking in the background. I can't change layouts. I can't change records. I can't close the window because of this script trigger. If I turn on debugger, try to close the window, I'm triggering my script and I'm choosing to exit with a script result of zero, meaning abort the intended action. That is the purpose of the on record commit, or at least one of the uses of the on record commit. You could send a message or share, you know, show a dialogue or something else if you wanted to. All right, here we go. This is fun. Coming soon to a FileMaker near you, three new script steps. Date TBD. I'm gonna just first start with an obvious principle, but I am going to edit a record on this layout. It has a record open state of two. I'm gonna switch records. That record was committed. I'm in a list. Previously, we were editing in a portal. That's a totally different matter. Switching records in FileMaker, we all know, commits the record that you leave. Well, let's bring up the debugger. Let's do this whole little demo with the debugger on. Step five in this demo script, bask in the glory. It's a long time coming. I created a new record. Now I switch to the first record. And in a single commit step, they're all committed. And they all have the same modification timestamp because they had not been they had not been sent to the server until that commit. They were cached on the local client. The edits, the records were all downloaded when the first edit occurred to the record. Could have been multiple edits to the record. And then they were uh, the new record was created, but a single commit they were uploaded to the record to the server. Gorgeous. Same script with one change. We've edited all the records. Revert transaction. Nothing has changed. They all still have the same timestamp they had before that record. And the new record disappeared. We could have had deletes in there. They would have been gone as well. Same script, we created a new record. Now we have a commit record step. And I'll point out this record is open right now, but I'm going to, I'm on this record, commit did not commit the record. It still has a record open state of two because commit, uh, commit records fails during an open transaction. It's that simple. And they're, they're all committed with the same new timestamp. And make a point. If I do a replace, they all got the same timestamp only because with the debugger, it's hard to, uh, with that, regardless, with the, the small found set, they're all gonna get the same timestamp. But in practice, what happened is each record got downloaded and uploaded as I went to each record in turn. Now, if I do that transactionally, open the transaction, do the replace,
They all have record open state too. <clears throat> they have not been committed in a single commit. They get uploaded to the server. That is radical. That means you can do a series of replaces on multiple fields and it's all part of the same transaction. You can do import records and it's all part of the same transaction. Now we're gonna try something else. This script step this is a go to related record to a child table, or it's really just any table. It doesn't have to be a GTRR, it could be a go to layout step. And now I'm editing records in another layout on another table, not using a portal. I'm even creating a record in this child table. And then with that single commit, I need to refresh. All the children had the same commit timestamp and to demonstrate because there's only one window, um, just so you can see it, I will post the debugger. It's hard to see. Created too many records here, just to make some, so you can see that bottom window, bottom of the window. Two records were created in the parent, with the same timestamp as four records were either created or, or edited in the child. Is that simple? Pretty radical. Last concept. Same script but we're going to call a new window step. Otherwise the same. What you may notice is that the record open state of these children is zero and the time they each have time stamps as if they've been edited. And I just created a new record That record's still open. Come back over to this transaction. That was a refresh issue. The two records that were in the parent are committed with the same timestamp. In the child window, the last record's still open that was created. The other records were committed with, close the debugger. different timestamps. What's the takeaway here? I'll pull up the script one more time with debugger. What it, what it comes down to is that a transaction is scoped to a window. These steps that run in this script after the new window step, are not part of the transaction. Even though they appear to be, they're in the, they look like they're in the transaction from the script step, script structure, but because they're in a new window, they are not. They're operating normally. They're getting edited one, and then as soon as you leave the record, it's getting committed. Or if you change layouts in that window, it would commit implicitly. The only records that are part of the transaction are the ones in the original window when the transaction was opened. That's not intuitive at first, I would have to say, though maybe it is after the fact. A transaction is scoped to a window. You can use it to your advantage, knowing how it works. Pretty powerful tools they've given us. Pretty awesome. 
Well, that is about what I figured out so far about transactions. We'll see how it is, how it works when it ships. Appreciate your time. Thanks for tuning in. And this is going to be fun. <laughs>